Hey there, Jarrett here, aka me, so I'm back in with another video, and today we're going over the top 10 cards uh, for Wild from The Great Dark Beyond. Uh, now, there's a few of them that probably could have made that this or this list here. I think Ethereal Oracle is a perfect example of a card that could see play in Wild. People love their Reno decks here, and that just kind of goes like hand in hand with Reno, uh, Reno decks here in general. A card that just draws a few cards is usually typically fine here. So I think that card could have been on the list here, but I felt like it's a little bit of a, a boring one, and I figured let's go a little bit more uh, with the spice here for Wild here, because I think there's a decent amount of it here for Wild uh, that potentially, even if they don't break the format in this expansion, maybe in future expansions, something comes out that kind of, like synergizes really well with them. Uh, you know, perfect example of this is Murmur. I think he's one of those cards here that right now, maybe not everything is figured out quite yet, but as it, this is a card that only gets more dangerous because there's only ever going to be more Battle Cry minions that come out. Uh, so that's why it's number 10 on the list. Plus, we already have like Shutterwalk Shaman that's a playable deck in Wild right now. So I would keep your eyes on this one. This one seems like it might be pretty dangerous. At number nine here, I have Healthstone. Obviously, for the exact reasons that you're all thinking here, it is the Demon Seed. I would say enough said. I, I don't know if you play two copies of this in that deck here, maybe just one copy, but it's still fine for what it is. Not very exciting. I don't really want to talk about the Demon Seed as much as, you know, as much as I need to, so but that's going to be the end of this one. I mean, there's nothing really much else to say about that. At number eight, I have the Ceaseless Expanse, and I know what all people are saying right now. Oh my god, most of these wild games are ending on, like, turn, you know, turn four, turn five. Well, yes, but also no. Uh, people love their Reno decks here, so I think this is going to see play in wild uh, in the most of the, the Reno packages here, because the games typically go a little bit longer, are a little bit more value-oriented, and swingy turns, and stuff like that, so I think this card does see play in Wild, but I'm not super high on it, which is why it's all the way down here at number 8, um, but I do think it's going to see a play, because people, people love their Reno decks, and they just want to play you know, any XL Reno deck out there right now. So I think this card, probably going to see a decent amount of play in Wild. At number seven here, I have Doom Maiden, and just for the same things that I said in the last one, I think it's just solely because people love their Reno decks, and this disrupts other decks, and yeah, I just think that this probably sees a decent amount of play. And most of the time, you're not going to get anything out of it. So keep that in mind. Uh, but people just love playing like their Disruption cards, Dirty Rat, Speaker Stomper, Low Thebs of the World, you know, Theatars, all that stuff here. People that people in Wild love doing that stuff. So that's why this card is here. I don't think it's, again going to be that great. That's why it's lower on the list, but I do think it's going to be experimented with quite a bit, so that's why it's here. At number six, I have Space Pirate. Uh, another thing that wild players love is their pirates. I mean, most of the aggro decks are pirate decks here, and not all of them play weapons here. Obviously, you know, Shadow Aggro Priest doesn't play weapons most of the time, but um, most of the other ones do, and I think this one is going to see a little bit of play here in those decks here, especially the Demon Hunter ones. They'll love this one. It's just fine for what it is, so yeah, that's why it's here at number six. At number five, I do have a little bit of a cop-out, because it was number five on my standard list. I got news for you, number four is going to be the same too. At number five, I have Exarch Niel. For the same exact reasons as I did standard and wild, especially whenever you're playing the XL Lion deck, you just want to assemble all the egg and combo pieces that you can to build board after board after board and then finally pop off with the naval mine. 
And the same reason for that, I have Quasar here. I think this card's going to see a lot of play in Wild. Rogue has a ton of Cycle and Wild that they can abuse this more than they can in Standard. So I think this is going to see a ton of play in Wild. At number three... I have Cure, the Light Beyond, and you could easily put um, the other one, I think it was, what, Kana or whatever, the the Dark One, the Dark Star or whatever, but um, the Warlock one for the Shadow Spells. I think you could easily put them, you know, side by side together here because there's cheap Shadow Spells in Wild 2, but I think this one's more abusable, obviously, with building wider boards and priests. I think it's going to be really good against aggro decks here in the format. Um, but sometimes you don't even have to play, a, a, you know, you play this and you play a non-holy spell, it's fine for what it is. Um, but I think most of the time you are going to play it in a deck that you can play a bunch of holy spells in a turn. Uh, I just think that this card is really good and it's just hard to figure out what deck it goes into now with like Radiant Elemental uh, being really you know, just not what Radiant Elemental used to be. So, uh, we'll wait and see on that, but I'm a little bit optimistic on this one here. I, I think it could be easily, like, slide down a few pegs here on the list and something else moves up. But I figured I'd put it at number three here because it is something that's a little bit different. At number two here, I have Overzealous Healer. I think this goes into, like, almost every single, maybe every single Priest deck out there right now. Uh, especially those Reno decks here. They just want to contain the board early on in the game to get to their mid-game. I think this is perfect. It's a minion, so it works really well, you know, with Magatha and stuffs too. And that's what most of the Reno decks are playing right now. Uh, so, yeah, I'm high on this one. Uh, I think it's... Pretty damn good, actually. And finally, at number one, I have Arcanite Revelation here. One mana, draw a card. If it's a spell, it costs one less, and it's an arcane spell. Obviously, any type of cheap card draw is going to be super efficient and better, but whenever it gives you that cost reduction and you get that mana back, that is really, really, really good here. And that is going to wrap it up here for the wild one. A much shorter video than the standard one, but that's because, like I said, numbers five and number four were kind of the same. I didn't really think I can move them up here, uh, just because I have a feeling if if the quasar is broken, it's going to get nerfed. That's what, exactly what's going to happen here. So I kind of took precaution measures on that here and just said, all right, we'll go with you know the other stuff here because it's more interesting. Argonite Revelation, not too interesting of a card here. Uh, but there's not too much, I don't think, here in the neutral package that seems super busted to me for a while. I think most of it is in the, the class cards here. Outside of, like I said here, maybe the Ceaseless Expanse and Ethereal Oracle are some cards that I really look at and go to and think, yeah, that's pretty busted. So... That's kind of my take on this one. Obviously here, like I said in the past videos, I think from here on out, I might be back for a few videos, but for most of the rest of the year, I am going to be taking off and focusing on some personal things that I want to do here before the end of the year and get those things done. Because at the start of the year, I want to be able to have a more fleshed out schedule of how to do, you know, doing videos and stuff like that and actually have a proper setup to do those videos in. So that's what I am kind of going to be working on for the rest of the year. Hopefully, you know, like I said, I'm not going to be completely gone. I'll still do some videos here and there, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the expansion release here. As a whole, I'm pretty excited for it. This is probably the most excited I am for an expansion in this year. The Wizbanks Workshop was like a cool theme, but it didn't really hit home with me on that style. And Perils in Paradise is like kind of meh. Actually, I think Perils in Paradise was probably the least amount that I played in like the first week and a half of a, a set being released since United and Stormwind, probably. So, yeah. 
there's that. So hopefully you guys enjoy the set. Hopefully you guys enjoy the release. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.